When I first started in the wig business, the hair alone could be up to $175 an ounce. Let's just say there was more money in hair than heroin. My stock of hair right now is probably worth over a million dollars. My name is Nicholas Piazza and I'm a wig maker, hairstylist, wig designer. I started doing wigs almost from the beginning of my career. This is my 50th year actually. These are some uh, covers that I'd done for some beauty magazine. I used two pounds of hair to create this style. I worked for the Kenneth Beauty Salon, which was at that time world renowned. All the celebrities, all the movie stars, including people like Jacqueline Onassis and Marilyn Monroe were clients there. I opened my own salon on the Upper East Side. I was there from 1985 until 2010, and I moved into the salon I'm in today at Gloria One. Did you wash this wig? No, I didn't. Okay, let me cut it and then wash it. So it takes about five or six weeks to make a wig. The job of crocheting the hair is called ventilating. The ventilating needles come in different sizes. So if we're doing very fine work, they'll use a, a needle that only takes one or two hairs in each knot. And if we're using a, a heavy wig, we might have a needle that takes up to 10 hairs in each knot. Sometimes the more delicate wigs actually take longer than the very thick ones. At one time there was the synthetic wig boom and everybody had a synthetic wig. And now people seem to be much more interested in, in the quality and they're willing to spend the money for it. My custom wigs range from $38.50 up to $5,000. You know, and I've made wigs for films that I've had to charge more than that for because I had to do them in a hurry and pay through the nose to get it done. My clients are a variety of people. It's the kind of thing where you get a lot of satisfaction when you have clients that are undergoing medical treatments. Sometimes it, it actually held them back from getting their medical treatments if they told that they were gonna have hair loss. And then once they got the wig and they saw that they looked as good or in many cases even better than they looked before, they go into their treatments with a, a lot better attitude. I don't know what sets me apart. I'm, I care about what I do, and also I know I'm good at it. And when you're good at something, you enjoy doing it. Les parapluies, l'espèce humaine, se protègent de la pluie et du soleil depuis qu'ils existent. Donc je revendique presque, presque, de faire le plus vieux métier du monde. Je m'appelle Thierry Millet, on m'appelle Monsieur Peps, car je dirige une petite affaire qui s'appelle Peps, qui est dans Paris, dans le plus vieux passage de Paris. Ici, nous réparons des parapluies, des ombrelles et des cannes. Alors, la maison Peps, elle existe depuis 47 ans, bientôt 48 ans. Donc j'espère faire les 50 ans de Peps. Ça, ça me fera plaisir quand même. La maison Peps, elle est unique en Europe. C'est la seule boutique d'Europe consacrée à sa réparation de parapluies, d'ombrelles et de cannes. On répare ici entre 8 et 10 000 parapluies chaque année. Alors pour être un bon réparateur de parapluies, il faut être patient, regarder et savoir toucher les choses. Que ce n'est que du mécano, mais il faut avoir les pièces et savoir les réassembler, ou les démonter les réassembler de manière à ce que ça fasse une harmonie. Bizarrement, ce sont les parapluies les moins chers qui sont les plus durs à réparer, parce que les matériaux sont de mauvaise qualité. Donc ça, on a plus de mal à réparer des choses de mauvaise qualité. Mais on le fait aussi. Mais euh, c'est vrai qu'un parapluie est très bien fait dans de beaux matériaux, dans des, dans des, euh, dans des bois magiques. Ça se répare avec un plaisir, une simplicité enfantine. C'est pas beau ça, sous la pluie Magique. Pourquoi Pep, c'est le seul aujourd'hui dans la réparation de parapluie D'abord, parce qu'il faut se lever tôt le matin et travailler beaucoup. Lorsque, lorsque les, mes clients viennent, ils ont un parapluie un petit peu, un petit peu ancien ou qui me demande de restaurer. D'abord, c'est la plus belle histoire qu'ils me racontent. C'est une histoire très personnelle. Ça me met, moi, une pression impossible parce que je suis obligé de réparer. Et quand le, le parapluie est restauré, tellement c'est beau. Et c'est ça qui, qui est merveilleux parce que c'est du sentiment. On est dans l'émotion. On n'est pas dans le rationnel. On est dans l'émotion. C'est magique. Très original. Et je l'adore. Thank you.
Great big story, we in here. Mama, we made it. Everybody always say that. I think this is better than my mom's. I think my grandma couldn't even do this. They think we, we got our grandmas cooking for us. No, this is us, we did that. Like, yeah, us young men. <laughs> Trap is is take risks and prosper. And that's what we doing in here. So that's what we eat is Trap Kitchen. 15 shrimps in the bag, man. Trap Kitchen is, is a spot where you prepare products to be distributed underground. We just use that mentality with food. And we're a full-blown catering service. And you also can order for delivery during the week. My team consists of myself and three other guys. I call them my brothers, my boy AWOL, um, DJ Kev and bad news. We're a small team, but we get the job done all the time, you know? I mean, we always Crips and Bloods, you know what I mean? Doing that kind of stuff, of course, I'm getting arrested every other day for nothing. They shooting at us. So now, the only thing we worried about is some food burning up, like, or running out. That's it. I was talking to my mom. She's like, you gotta do something, son. I'm like, okay, well, what can I do? I seen the Corn on Blue commercial on TV. I'm like, damn, that look kind of cool. I could probably do something with that. I know. Like, you can make good money cooking. I moved to Vegas, started culinary school, and that's where I began to practice my craft, you know? He really came in here from Vegas. He like, bro, what we gonna do? Like, we need some money. I said, wait, we can sell some food. Through Instagram, I, I was like posting my food and people was like, oh, that looks so good, that looks great. And I was like, okay, now it's time for me to offer this food to the streets. Like how a, a, a D-boy pushes dope, you know what I'm saying? And it worked. The key to our success, we never gave up, man. Every day, that's all I think about is how can we improve our company? How can we improve our food? How can we improve the taste? Even though I'm mean, in the house trapping, I feel like it's a real restaurant. I have one job, making the best clothing in the world. My name is Martin Greenfield. I used to be Maximilian Grunfeld when I was born, but we, I changed it to make it American because I love this country. <laughs> My craft is very difficult to define because it's many things. I am a maker of clothing. I know how to measure. I know how to fit people. Very few people could match me. I was responsible for all the presidents. Clinton, I measured in the White House. Obama measured in the White House. So then I made them perfect suits. We never had to fix nothing. My life was a sad life before I came to America because I lost my family. I was left alone. Everybody was dead. We were occupied. Auschwitz was a month later. I was in the concentration camp a year and two months. It was my second day in Auschwitz. There was no more names in the concentration camp, only numbers. When they called me, they sent me to a tailor. The head tailor spoke my language. He was Jewish. They asked me, are you a tailor? No. I said, if you could show me how to make the collar. He says, I'll make you a collar. Showed me how to make a collar. The pain is still in my heart about my family. I still dream about my family, like they're alive. But on the outside, you will never know. I didn't think I was going to survive. I was liberated by Eisenhower. General Eisenhower came in when I was 15 and a half years old. And when they walked in, I shook his hand, crying. You saved my life. I came to America September 18, 1947. They gave me the job as a tailor. I told my boss, listen, Eisenhower liberated. I want you to make him a trippy suit like I wear myself. He'll like it. 
Once he had the first three-piece suit, from then on you didn't see Eisenhower or nothing but three-piece suit. So that's how it started. I made sure we dressed all the presidents. Uh, with Obama, first he wanted me to copy a suit. I don't copy anybody. Everybody copies my suit. So uh, if he wants me to make something, I have to measure. Next day, he sends an email. It'd be a pleasure to meet you, Dad. I'm happy when I'm in the factory. My job is the most important thing in my life. Quality is so important to me because I know that's what kept me in business and that's why I'm here talking to you.